If this wasn't my job and I was watching this video at home, I might be wondering why myself and Jamie were putting so much effort into counting bits of seagrass while in this really amazing destination. This is Dr. Holly East. She's traveled from the UK to the remote islands of the Maldives. The next nearest big landmass to the south, probably Antarctica. The next nearest big landmass to our west is probably Eastern Africa. Here is the true front line of the climate crisis. The Maldives is made up of over 1,000 coral reef islands, and most reach just a meter or so above the sea level. By the end of this century, this tiny nation could be at risk of drowning beneath rising sea levels. And the thing that could help prevent this? Seagrass. We should all be really excited about seagrass because it provides lots of really good benefits. Seagrass provides food and homes for sea animals, as well as protection from coastal erosion. Also, excitingly, it can be really useful in the fight against climate change. And that's because seagrass can store carbon dioxide. And actually, an area of seagrass is about 35 times more efficient at storing up carbon dioxide than the same area of a rainforest. But seagrass could also be one of the mechanisms that help build and maintain reef islands in the future. In a previous study, Holly studied the core of the islands and found that the Maldives were formed thousands of years ago, when sea levels were higher than they are now. And this is really interesting because under climate change it's predicted that we're going to see rises in sea level and also increases in the number of large storm type events. So this suggests that actually, rather than drowning under rising sea levels, maybe we might see reef islands starting to build more again and grow and build up vertically. Back in the Maldives, Holly is now interested in studying the role that seagrass plays in transporting sand and sediment to the reef islands. Which is why she and her colleague Jamie spent most of their trip counting blades of seagrass with this. This is our most important piece of equipment. Quadrat is a square that we know the exact area of. And what we do is we randomly place it, like so, onto the sea floor. And then we just count how many blades of seagrass are in that square. Like we brought the drone, but really it's the data from this that we can't do without. So we've been in the water for hours. Wrinkly hands! Their work is particularly important since seagrass is often perceived as a nuisance to the country's vital tourism industry. Tourists flock to the islands, expecting to swim through pristine, clear waters, and the black seagrass gets in the way of that picture-perfect experience. As a result, many resorts have actively dug up and removed seagrass around their islands. In doing this work, we are hoping to add to the argument to save the seagrasses and to protect them into the future, because it could be really important to help build reef islands. The long walk in. But the growth and maintenance of the Maldives coral reef islands hinges on one crucial condition. The islands are made mostly of coral, so about 75% of coral material. And what that means is if these islands are going to keep building and keep growing, we're going to need to have a healthy coral reef. Lucky enough to go to the Maldives back in 2012 and we went to these exact same areas and the reefs were really pristine. But then it was really shocked this time that most of the coral reefs were actually dead uh, and this is really sad to see. And so, as scientists help us understand the threats posed by climate change, Hardy's research also shows that there's still hope. And in this case, it starts with a blade of seagrass.